Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. Well, today is going to be a play day for me. Uh, finally, it's been like a couple months since I actually had a day where I could just do whatever I wanted. Um, so today is the day and I'm, I'm wanting to make some covers and um, it was something I've been wanting to do for a while, but uh, I have been inspired by a couple of different events. Uh, one of them uh, being a kit that I saw um, and that I'm going to be working with next week for Antonio Makes Mondays. If you haven't watched my uh, previous uh, follow-up video, uh, I talked about uh, being on Antonio's uh, squad team, um, creative squad team. And so so uh, when I got his kits, uh, and I won't go into big detail, but it was just I was very, very inspired by the colors and so I was uh, glad I was going to be making these journal covers because one of them is going to be perfect for it. And you'll have to guess which one. <laughs> so I wanted to make soft cover journals and I'm using a 9 by 12 envelope, um, just a you know regular shipping envelope or document envelope. And I've got three here because I want to do three. Um, so I figured I would show you my process of how I'm going to do these uh, covers. And then, you know, as we go along uh, with the different stages, it'll be a, a breakup of several days. One of them will be putting in the signatures. I want to show you how I, I'm going to do that for these books and uh, and then how I embellish it. Uh, and it, I'm hoping, you know, it, it might take me uh, three or four videos, but I'm hoping to get them all done pretty quickly. So the envelope is nine by twelve. And normally I would use used envelopes, um, but... You know, I haven't had any uh, big mail coming through lately, and um, I've run out. So luckily for me, I have a box of these, and um, uh, so I'm going to use brand new ones today. I don't normally, but uh, today I will. And sometimes I fold these, um, and I use the flap as part of a closure. Uh, but for these ones, I, I think I'm just going to leave them as they are and just seal up the, the envelope um, I really don't need um, to have that extra little flap for, for what I want to do with these uh, covers. So that's all I would do is just seal it with a little bit of glue and then continue to work on it from there. So I want to start out by showing you the three different fabrics that I'm going to be working with for these covers. And this is one. And Lori, if you're watching, you're going to have a good laugh. This was a quilt that I got at the thrift shop. I was with Lori and it, it was not this color <laughs> when I first got it. It was very, very yellow. Um, they, at, at my little thrift shop, they have a bin um, where they put blankets and quilts that are not perfect and they sell them for a dollar each um, because they sell them as uh, used uh, quilts for dog beds. Um, and all kinds of blankets. Sometimes there's fleece blankets and sometimes you can get lucky and actually get a wool blanket. I have gotten a couple of wool blankets that were a little moth eaten and I just cut out the, the bad parts and, and use the rest. Um, but this was, this was very, very yellow. It reeked of hundreds of years of smoking. And as you can see, there's lots of shabby torn bits on this uh, quilt. Um, like this uh, little patch here is coming loose, but that's okay. I like this kind of a look. Um, it is finished on the back. It has some shabby ends here. I guess over the years, the, the uh, finishing has come off the, the border. Uh, but I also like this look and I plan to use this um, in some upcoming uh, projects that you'll get to see as well. So I thought I would use part of this as, as uh, one of the covers. And then, uh, I'm just going to get this one out of the way. And then uh, the next fabric I have here, um, I had bought this a while ago and I showed this to you. And, and this is um, uh, a piece that I've cut for myself, but I've also cut several for sale. And, and part of my, my first quilt there will also be for sale and I'll explain that as I go along. And um, so this, this piece here is approximately... It's approximately 20 inches by, hmm, if it's ironed out flat, it would be about 23, not quite 24 inches. 
but it's certainly more than enough to make two journal covers, possibly even three. Um, but I'm going to be uh, happy to make two out of it, and, and I'm just putting this manila envelope here for you to see. So, so that's how much I'm going to use, and the fabric is doubled. Um, so so uh, I will have a leftover piece here that I can make some pockets with, uh, which I'm, I'm going to do. And uh, there'll be lots of little scrappy bits left as well that I can use for making clusters and stuff uh, and, and different things along the way. So this is the kind of piece of fabric I sell in my shop. And when you when you purchase them, they're they're not very expensive. They're one, two, and three dollars, um, depending on what they are. It, and also, you know, I may have fabrics where I include some other embellishments and stuff. But they're priced very, very reasonable to um, uh, make at least one, if not two, journals. So this is the second fabric that I chose, and this this fabric will be for sale by the end of next week uh, because then I'll be finished with using it for my projects and all the leftover pieces which there's a lot um, I probably will have enough to make five kits with this um, will go up for sale and I will let you know when they do and so then the third fabric that I have to work with and this is also going to be turned into some kit fabric is this tablecloth now, again, I happen to be with Lori. We were in Value Village when I found this one. Um, I, I, um, I can't believe how perfect it is. It's just a cotton tablecloth, and it has these little patch outlines, even though they're not real patches. Like, some of them are little squares. Um, it's a variety of colors um, going forward here. And it's in very good shape. Um, no holes, no flaws. So I'm excited to use this as well in, in um, some of these, these um, covers. And because of the vast um, patterns, uh, and they're all kind of, you know, uh, nice complementary colors, what, what I like about this the most is the lines that I can use to follow for embellishing with laces and trims, depending on how it cuts out of the... Uh, fabric when when I get started. So again, this one will probably be cut into that uh, 20 by 20 piece so that I can work and make at least two journals out of it. So that's going to be my three different covers for this process. And then um, I need some lining uh, because it'll be what's on the inside of the book when you open it up. And I chose, uh, I have this sheet. I've been working with it for Mm, at least a dozen projects now. I've used it to, to line a couple handbags and uh, then it just got put in the pile and then I started using it for covers and I, I can't believe how much uh, how far a sheet will go uh, for making um, journal in, uh, you know inside covers um, because, because this was one strip that I cut off the sheet and it is uh, about 14 inches long because I thought it was going this way uh, for the length of the manila folder. So this was one strip that I cut off at 14 inches. And, and I've already torn off the three pieces that I need. And they're very generous pieces. Um, so I think I have enough here to do the inside covers of at least another four, maybe five journals. <laughs> So that's a little scary. This is only one strip off of a sheet, and I have enough right here just to make eight journals. Yikes. Um, so, so I'll probably make at least three, if not six, as I go along. So when I do these, um, I start out with the, the lining, but I do have to iron this, and I will iron it off camera and come back when I'm, when I'm ready to do that, um, the next part. So, so um, when I... Um, cut my linings. I cut them larger than the manila folder because I'm going to do some um, folding and gluing and stuff and then it'll eventually get sewn and, and we'll get more into those details a little bit later yet. So the lining goes on the envelope on the inside and I'm, for the sake of this video I'll just get this out of the way up here. I hope you can see all right here. Maybe I'm causing a shadow. I think that's not too bad. Um, so, so once I have the the lining on, uh, it will go around the envelope. 
The only thing I have to be concerned with uh, when I'm doing the linings is if it's a light color, um, anything that's printed on the envelope, if you know if it's a used envelope or if it has postage imprints on it or you know address information could show through. Uh, in this case, it's quite uh, thick and, and uh, dark, so it, it's not showing through. And an example of that is these little black um, imprints on here, and, and I can't see it through here, so I'm not going to worry about it. But if there, there were words, you know, sometimes we write in dark black felt marker when we're sending mail so that it's bold and you can see the, the address clearly. And so sometimes those kind of markings will show through on your envelope or, or on your, through your cover. Um, then I just take some some uh, book pages, just regular sheets of book pages, and, and uh, glue it down to cover it up. I don't mind if there's book page words coming through. You know, maybe I use some music sheet or um, something that's complementary to whatever the cover, the uh, lining is. Um, or I have in the past also just glued another piece of fabric down first and then put my lining on second. So, so I need the linings, I have my covers, and I have my envelopes, and the only other thing is with the fabric, uh, on the fabric side of it, when I'm putting these together, I always like to have a piece of felt. And this just uh, complements it and um, gives it a little bit of a cushion um, uh, on the fabric when I'm putting the fabric down. I'll just grab a piece of that fabric. And it just gives it a little bit more of a quilty heavier feeling so so that it, you don't feel the the uh, paper through the cover so uh, envelope inside lining felt and fabric is what we're starting with today so I have um, this piece of felt and I have some felt that I found in my pile that I guess was an adhesive backed felt some of the adhesive is still there but the rest of it is you know, it's uh, discolored. I probably picked this up at a craft sale somewhere in a, in a bag of felt. Um, but either way, it's on the inside. You don't see it. And the stickiness is on the inside as well. Um, so you won't see it. And um, this is perfect to use for, for making these um, covers. The other thing about this is that it's perfect in size as 9 by 12. <laughs> Um, actually, yeah, the 9 by 12 So it's a perfect fit with the um, envelope, I believe. Yes, it is. And so, again, it's all part of uh, creating a little bit of thickness, a little bit of dimension, and uh, making it feel more like a soft cover book than, than um, paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to iron my linings nice and flat. And then I will, uh, I'll be right back and I will proceed to uh, glue at least one in front of you and then uh, keep going like that in stages. So the camera will stop and start. Um, while the video will only be, you know, maybe inside of an hour uh, for you uh, as, a, as a viewer, I'm sure this little project of mine is going to take me a, a couple of hours to do. So I will be right back with the um, ironing done. Okay, I'm back with my linings all ironed. And just so you know, this ended up uh, sitting on the on the back burner for a, a, about a week and a half. So now um, I'm, I'm back to, to working on these covers. So as I was saying in the video earlier, um, you know, it may only seem like a few minutes, but it uh, will be over a course of some time. And I, I thought I would get them all done in the day, but then, uh, I don't know, something must have happened that I couldn't finish them. So now I want to uh, glue my, my envelope to my lining. And I've, I've got a glue stick here that is a little bit heavier duty than, than um, the regular uh, glue sticks. And like this one says extreme hold. I just use it to uh, glue the, the envelope to the fabric just as a basic hold. Because I will be sewing these down afterwards. I'll also be sewing pockets on here. So that will also hold everything in place. But for just getting started and, and uh, doing the basic steps, I'm, I'm using the glue stick to, to glue it down. So I'm just going to go back and forth until I have it all covered with glue. Okay. 
swing back and forth. And I don't always do my covers this way. Sometimes I have other methods, but I will always take you with me when I'm um, doing them. Um, it's just for this style of journal that I wanted to create, um, do it this way. So I'm just, I've turned it over and I'm just going to lay it down flat on the fabric, giving myself lots of room around the edges, as you can see, just pressing it into place. And I'm just going to smooth it out. Now you could smooth it out with, you know, your bone folders or your credit cards or whatever you like. I just lay it down flat and pull on it a little bit. To make sure it's down and I see there's a little bit of a lumpiness in that corner but that feels pretty good so I'm gonna flip it back over now and I do trim a little bit away from the corner not a lot but I do trim a little bit away so I hope you can see me cutting that corner I leave about maybe about a quarter of an inch to maybe three-eighths. Okay. And then the next thing I do is I take my glue stick and I put a lot of glue right in the corner. And I fold this corner up into the paper. Just like that. And you know, I do put a little bit of glue underneath the fabric as well so that it will lay flat. And then I do that on the next corner. This time I'll actually do the fabric at the same time. And then I just pull it up so that you get a nice point on your corners. Now this is my method. Everybody has their own way of doing these. Um, and you know, there's, there's good ways and bad ways, and you just have to try and see what works best for you. Um, because I'm sewing this, I want a glue that is not going to, um, gum up my machine. Now this one, I cut a little bit close, but that's okay. Uh, I want to be able to sew through this, uh, eventually. And then doing this corner. So I just caught a little bit on the fabric as well so that I don't have to go back and do it again. And then just folding it up to the corner so that you had a nice point in the corner. And then I, um, I will turn it this way so I can work on it a little bit better. And then I take my glue stick and run it across the whole side and then just gently pull this forward and press it into place as much as I can so that you have a nice straight line and good corners. And then doing the next side. This way you don't interfere with, you don't have this lifting up while you're trying to do this corner because you've already taken care of the little corner parts. Um, so doing this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Just run my glue. I see I'm just out of glue, almost out of glue here.
see, I may have to finish this project with the regular glue. Um, and that's okay because I've got the corners done, so it's it's not as um, hard to do the rest of this part. So I'm just going to fold that up. Only because I don't want to stop the video to go and get um, another package of glue or another tube of glue. And I really don't worry too much about it getting, um, being a little bit wrinkled or anything like that because it will flatten out once it's dry. And also, um, you're not going to see this because this is the, the other side, um, where, where the fabric is going to go, the cover fabric. And I'm going to have a layer of the felt here first, um, to, to, uh, cushion it a little bit more. So you're not going to see any kinds of wrinkles. I wonder if I can use my, my, uh, oh, no, I can't. Well, maybe not really. Okay. Well, I'll just use a little bit to, uh, finish it off here. If I can. Yeah, that's not too bad. And just again, folding it up. Pulling it a little bit. And then the last side. So this one I'm going to have to use my other glue because it's either that or stop the camera again and I don't want to. So this will also hold enough, like I said, it's just enough to get the, um, the uh, fabric to stay in place when you're sewing. And none of this is going to show anyway because this is where the fabric is going to go. Okay, so that is the, um, this is the outside, and there is the inside. Nice and flat, and the corners are pretty nice uh, and finished. And once they're they're sewn down, because I will do a straight stitch around the um, whole thing once we've got everything lined up together, um, it will reinforce all those corners, and there won't be any um, straggly threads sticking out. So the next step for this now is to, um, um, I would, I would probably glue my felt down, but in this case, I want pockets first. So I'm going to fold the fabric in half, this, this cover in half and sort of eyeball where I want the pockets to be. Now I did have a couple pieces of fabric here just to show you what I was going to do. And this is cut off of one of the, the covers that I'm making. And so, so I'm going to first get that felt out of the way. I'm going to first fold this in half, just gently, just so I have an idea of where the center of the book is. Okay. So when I go to put my pockets on, I've cut uh, two pieces of fabric. Um, these are uh, five inch by uh, four and a, about a quarter because I want to, uh, on my sewing machine, I'm going to just hem down the top edge of this pocket so that when I'm putting anything in the pockets, it's not catching, it's not fraying. Um, you can also finish it with some lace and that is something I can do after but I want to make sure that my pockets don't in interfere with the center of the book and I don't want them to stick out too much on the outside edge so I want to be able to sew them in and 
you know, I don't worry if one ends up being a little bit higher and one is lower because they're not going to be seeing both sides of the book at the same time. But you want to be reasonably close. I mean, that's the whole idea, right? And I've got a loose thread here, so I'm just going to pull that away. So in making my uh, pockets, I'm going to just do a quick zigzag stitch across the top here just to hold that little hem in. And then I'm going to uh, stitch it right onto the covers. So I've got all three of my, my uh, linings done. So I'm going to go and cut the rest of my pockets and uh, stitch them all and then stitch them onto the back or onto the um, inside of the um, uh, lining and to the book. And so we will see all my stitching on the other side when I come back. So I'm going to pause the camera now and hopefully I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, I'm back with all my pockets sewn on and um, I actually also took the time to cut my fabric so that it's a little bit more manageable, manageable to show you and um, I, I will get to that in a second. So here are the pockets for this uh, first uh, cover and as you can see they fit in very nicely to uh, put stuff in it. And what I did is I did a, a zigzag along the top to hem this pocket. And then I just did a straight stitch, uh, reinforcing, going back and forth a couple of times on uh, the, the two top corners so that I know that, um, you know, from putting stuff in and, and pushing and putting pressure on it, it's not going to uh, break apart. It's also sewn to fabric as well as paper, so that also gives it extra reinforcement um, for the pockets. I purposely left these kind of shabby along the outside edges because I kind of like that look. And... Along the bottom, I don't think I have to worry really about what's going in there, but I will probably reinforce it with, uh, you know, adding a little bit of lace or something that uh, glues it down even further. But that's later on as we progress. So this is what it looks like on the back side now. You can sort of see my stitching there through uh, uh, on the uh, fabric, but you can definitely see the stitching here and you can see where I've gone back and forth a couple of times to reinforce the pocket. So that was that one. And then uh, this one here, same thing. Now this one, I hemmed the edge as well. And I just did a zigzag across the top to hem it first and then put the pockets down. Um, one thing I had forgot to mention is if you want, you can certainly glue them with your Fabri-Tac or your, um, you know, your any kind of fabric glue that's going to glue fabric to fabric. Um, I like to sew. And when I'm sewing, I just put a little bit of glue stick um, just a little bit tacking it in spots to hold it nice and uh, tight and then um, I, I let it dry uh, because you don't want to break your thread in mid stitching so I do let it dry a little bit which is you know hap uh, I was away for a few minutes longer than you think and um, and that just holds it in place you will have a little bit of puckering because no matter you know fabric shifts especially when you you are um, working with fabrics on layers of paper it's going to shift a little bit and buckle on you. You just have to follow along as best as you can. And then, um, you know, if worse comes to worse, embellish it. Uh, you know, hide the, those little puckers with something else. But don't get caught up on, you know, if it doesn't work out perfectly. You can always undo it and redo it. Uh, but, you know, usually I just find a way to uh, hide anything that's not perfect. In the case of this particular fabric, these pockets were cut, uh, and you may, I don't know if you can see it in, in the uh, video or not, but there is a crease line here where, where this was folded down as part of the curtain top, the, where the rod goes through. And the same with on this one, because it was the perfect size piece to use. Uh, and so even with ironing and ironing and ironing, I can still see that line uh, and you may not see it in the camera, but, you know, if you were in person, you would see that definite line. So I will definitely use some lace or trims to um, hide that so it's not so visible and further enhance the pockets anyway. So that was that one. Put that aside. And the last one is these quilted pockets. Now, because the quilting is very, very thick on here, I didn't fold the edge over. 
um, what I did is I zigzagged a couple of times to to uh, make sure that it's not going to come undone and not have um, too much fraying here. And I probably will just glue a piece of some kind of shabby lace or tatting or something across the top to further, um, you know, strengthen the pocket itself. But you know, it is layers of, of um, quilting and I didn't want to add any more because already this is quite bulky when, you know, when you are making a one signature book, um, you don't want to add extra bulk wherever possible. Um, now this one has this little piece that was loose. I caught it in with the stitching there and I will probably just catch it down with some glue or look at a way, you know, it is an automatic tuck spot. So I could probably add something into there if I wanted to and, and play on that. Um, I may use, um, you know, some more decorative trim uh, to go with it to add into theirs. But sometimes, you know, this shabby stuff just tells you what, what you're supposed to do with it. So so I'm going to leave it hanging in for now and see what, what I uh, come up with in between. I really liked, uh, it's too bad I didn't have enough pieces, but it would have meant I would have had to go get the quilt and cut off another piece. On this side, I have a very shabby uh, pocket. Um, so I just stitched it a little bit higher um, so that I could leave all this uh, fun shabby edges along here. And and this one too is very ripped and torn. And I will play on it. And if it looks like it's going to be a problem, I will embellish it. So I'm either way, I'm happy with the results of that. And um, they are both functioning pockets that look very nice. I mean, it looks a little strange right now because it's so white against the, uh, the uh, ivory or light brown background. But once they're decorated, you, it'll look different. So yeah, stitching is all on the back. Uh, in this case, I hadn't cut this one little thread, so I'll just cut that now. So the next thing to do is to add the felt on. And I'm just gonna get these out of the way here. I'm gonna start with the one on the bottom first, just to show you. So when I was um, first talking about this, I was saying, oh, how nice the uh, felt fit inside. Uh, but I realized I use felt right to the edges of the envelope when I'm doing the the uh, covers first um, but in the case of the lining you need to make it a little bit smaller and in this particular case for two reasons one this is an adhesive backed uh, felt so when I uh, take this backing off and lay it down it's going to be extremely sticky and there's no way I want my um, I want to be trying to sew through that because I will break the thread every every uh, five stitches my husband is working up on the deck uh, above us, so <laughs> if you hear any noise, it's just him doing stuff. There he goes. <laughs> um, so, so when when um, when I uh, do it this way, where I'm I'm doing the finishing the lining first and then adding this on top, I you need to make it a little bit smaller. Um, uh, the reason for the first reason was the the uh, adhesive. The second reason is. When you're stitching, you don't want this to be too close to the edge where your stitches are going to show and you're going to see this white or whatever color you use. I mean, maybe you have purple felt and you just want to use it up. So you don't want to see it poking through the edges. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and glue all along the fabric edge because, you know, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to get perfectly along the edge all the way around. You're going to miss spots. So you want to be able to know that uh, you're stitching this inside of the stitches so that it um, doesn't show on the outside. Now this style that I'm doing today is going to be very very shabby. Um, so once I've got the uh, felt uh, in place, in this case it's it's adhesive, but on the other, uh, oh, oh, there's one more with adhesive and the other one is just a regular felt. So that one I will just glue down with glue stick again, just to hold it in place. You could use your tacky glue, but it's really not necessary. Um, it's just to hold it in place until it's all stitched. So once it's, it's ready to go, I will automatically um, glue the fa fabric down a little bit as well to the felt, uh, just to hold it in place. And I will give myself a little wiggle room because I'm going to stitch uh, uh, one row of stitching very close to the edges I can get uh, so that we, we know for sure the felt isn't going to show through. And, and I'll go all the way around this whole piece uh, until it's closed off. 
And this way, with the extra fabric here, I can decide um, to, to uh, tear it and leave it shabby, um, or I could cut it close to the edge. I will probably, because it's such a fun fabric, I will probably uh, leave it shabby. So, but I don't want to do that until I've got it stitched down because, you know, if it wiggles around a little bit, you could end up, if you're, if you make it too tight, you could end up where you've got very little um, to catch with your sewing machine and then you might have to do a little patch job. So it's always better to leave it a little bit larger and cut away the excess afterwards. Um, when I cut it, I will probably cut it, and, I, and I'll show you this, uh, I will cut it about, um, you know, maybe about an eighth of an inch wider and then pull the threads so I get this really nice frayed edge for this one. And I will come back to gluing the felt down. So on this uh, next one, it'll be the same thing. Um, I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to glue the felt down and leave a good uh, size piece around the edge here. Um, even if it means, you know, I have these shabby strips that I have to cut off afterwards, at least I have lots of room um, that if this shifts a little bit or buckles a little bit, it's not going to uh, be the end of the world and, and I will still be able to sew it all down. Sometimes, you know, things happen and you get this uh, bulk that you cannot recover from. You get a big lump in there that you cannot recover from. The only thing you can do is undo it and do it again. And it happens. It happens to everyone. So don't feel that, you know, if you get a whole bunch of buckling and things are stretching too much on you, just take it apart, pull it away from the felt because the felt, um, you're just lightly tacking it onto the felt and then just readjust it and, and do it again. And sometimes, you know, you may want to go along and do a basting stitch uh, just in and out with a needle and thread all the way around to basically hold it together. Uh, I always like to wing it. Um, and But sometimes that's the price I pay is that I have to undo it and redo it again. But, you know, it's one of those things that everybody is different and how they, they are as far as being precise and you also can look at it from the point as if there's something you can do to cover that bulking and, and um, uh, puckering, um, then there's always ways to get around it. So, you know, I never worry about what it's going to look like till the end. Like, look, at isn't that going to be pretty? There is, again, some stitching here that um, I have some threads to pull out uh, that I must have missed um, here and there. Um, but it's, it's going to get covered with embellishments and, and, uh, something on top yet. So at this point, I don't know what, but it's going to be very, very pretty. So I'm excited to see that part. This third one, um, this is that quilt. Now I really liked this piece because of this shabbiness on the bottom. And I really wanted to incorporate that into the, the, uh, book cover. However, it meant that I didn't have much of a design um, to look at when the book is finished. But I just, I just love this so much that I thought, okay, well, I'm going to definitely be building some type of a topper on top of this. And in order to, to save that, that piece of fringe, I am really, really tight here. So this is one of those situations where it's like, oh boy. Can I make it? Can I get it to work all the way to the end? I don't know. You know, it's going to take some, like, I don't have a lot of room here, so I'm going to have to be really careful when I'm uh, putting this together as to how I can keep it flat and straight without scooping too much that when I get to this side, I don't have anything. So this might be one of those situations where I have to base stitch it. So ugh, it's extra work. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to see what happens after I glue it and then I will take it from there. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to do the same thing twice. <laughs> but then at the other end, I might be doing the same thing twice. So just to show you, this has got the adhesive back. It's it's still pretty sticky, so I wouldn't want my sewing machine going through that. And so I kind of know where it's going in here. Um, so I'm just going to start with the one spot. I've still got the, the uh, tape underneath or the paper underneath and I'm just going to eyeball place it. So I've trimmed all of these down 
And I kept the lift leftover pieces because I will probably use them for making some kind of cluster bases. And i got to hope now that I didn't put this on too crooked that I'm going to get um, wonky on the other end here, especially on camera. You'll be laughing at me if I do. Uh, looks like it did not too bad here. Okay, so that's the first one. And yeah, lucky for me, it had the adhesive, so this should hold nice and tight. The other one is now going to be getting it onto here. So you can see, I do not have a lot of room. I gotta be very, very careful how I place this down without taking too much so that I end up short on the other side. So I've got it just basically on the outside edge of where I'm going to be sewing. And I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit. Oop, everything's in my way here. And taking my glue stick, I'm just going to put some glue under here and hold it in place. And you can see I don't have much room here. I can't even lift it up to show you. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue I'm not concerned about the top or the bottom, but I will glue those, um, but I'm not concerned with the top or the bottom so much as I am concerned with getting it over to this edge because I really want to save and use that fringe. my glue cap to just press it into there a little bit. So far it looks not too bad. And then I am going to lift it here a little and put a little bit under there. Now, normally I would glue uh, more on in the middle as well, but because I, I didn't want to um, risk not being able to stretch it across, I'm just gluing around the outside edge to hold it in place. And just catching the bottom here. Okay, and hopefully, <laughs> cross your fingers for me. <laughs> um, hopefully, I've glued it enough to hold it in place uh, so that the sewing machine will allow me to sew it right through. So I'm going to continue to do the same thing with putting these ones on. Um, I don't know if you need to see the whole thing. In this case, I, I'm using a piece of felt, just plain felt. So I'm going to glue it down. Remember, it's not about catching. Oh, I see. I have this thread here. I'll just trim it like that. It's not about catching. Oh, that's too much glue. I caught it on those threads. Um, catching it for stitching. It's just to hold it in place while... I um, adhere the fabric to it, but that's a little bit too much glue. But again, I won't be sewing on it, so I don't have to be concerned with um, it being wet and going through my machine. Just have to avoid these threads a little bit so that I don't uh, glob up my glue again. Okay, so I'm just going to lay this down over top, making sure that it's centered in here and leaving myself enough of a gap.
Now, when you're doing this, if you do have directional fabric, always check where your pockets are um, before you glue it down because you do not want to run into a situation where you've uh, glued your pockets on upside down. And, you know, just take it from someone who's been there and um, know that these things can happen. So always check where your pockets are and what direction your pockets are supposed to be going into. So I have a lot of extra room here, so I don't have to worry too, too much about that. So I'm just going to flip this over and do the same thing. I'm going to put some glue on the fabric or on the felt, I mean, in this case, as well as a little bit on the edges because I want to catch my fabric right to the back of the cover or the inside lining. Threads here. There's more threads there. Oop. Now I'm going to go a little bit down the center. Because once I get to the gluing the sides down I won't be able to get in the in there that much and this is just to hold it in place enough you don't want it to seep through which is why I'm not using my my liquid glues but you can you just have to brush it out with one of these uh, little rubber brushes or or brush it out a little bit with your fingers or a, a paintbrush and so now I'm just going to go and catch it along the edge here with my glue stick. Just enough to hold it in place. How many times have I said that today? Okay. And now lifting up this end. Now I do my covers uh, many different ways. In this case, I wanted the lining to be nice and clean, um, have the pockets on it already, and um, I'm going to build on the covers after the book is put together uh, and build on it with by using hot glue or some manual stitching. But sometimes I, I do the covers and I, I put the covers to the, or the tops to the, the paper first, and then I do all my stitching, and the stitching goes through the paper, and then it's the lining that is uh, added afterwards. And the lining can be added several ways. Um, you know, it could be ha added with another piece of paper uh, to finish it off so that it's, it's nice and straight, and then glued down uh, onto the um, envelope. But then you need to make the paper a little bit bigger if you want to do that so that it's a finished edge on the inside and on the outside. Oh, I missed one spot, didn't I? I didn't do this one. So that'll be a, an, uh, probably a, another video where I show doing it from the other side um, in another uh, batch of journals. Uh, if I ever get these finished, because this has been a, a long process. Like I said, you saw the first part of this video, but I actually did it a couple of weeks ago. Um, before I, I did my Antonio Makes video. <laughs> okay, so that is nice and flat now and ready to be sewn. So this one too, I will start in the bottom corner here somewhere and slowly. I don't rush. I take my time and do the stitching slowly so that, um, you know, by the time I get around, it's uh, reasonably straight. And <laughs> we will see. So that one is done. I'm not going to bore you and do this one on camera, but I will come back and show you the finished results because this is another one that I have to uh, take the adhesive off. So I will do that shortly. I'll see you in a bit. Hello, I'm back again. Okay, whew. You know, this is the one I was worried about the most, and this one I think was the easiest in the end. <laughs> I did come very, very close in my edges here but I did manage to catch it 
just at the last bit there and it has a nice fold to it so it it eases very nicely it's pretty ugly looking on the front <laughs> uh, but you know I'm going to fix it up I wanted to save this shabby part here that is half the you know the embellishing right there is it's just beautiful so now for this one the only thing I want to do is trim it close to the to the edge of this the um, inside lining without uh, getting too close I would like a little bit of a lip along the edge you cannot see the felt it's buried inside here so I'm happy about that and I'm just going to take my scissors and this is a one-shot deal too I think I like putting myself under all this extra pressure on on camera um, but now that it's done uh, the decorating is going to cover uh, any any rough uh, patches that I might have um, from the quilting fabric itself and just trimming it I'm not too concerned if it's perfect because like I said I'm going to add some lace and trims on here and and by the time I'm done you're not going to see much of this edge and the whole thing is to make this look shabby anyway um, it's supposed to be a little bit on the shabby side because it is a an old quilt and this just I, I just want to reinforce that you know sometimes when you've got clothes that you're taking to the thrift shop just take another look at it or something that you're going to throw out take another look at it because if you can uh, repurpose it into a journal um, instead of it going to a thrift shop and then into the up right away into the landfill um, you know give it one more life this little piece here will become a great embellishment on the inside of this book and I've got a pile of those uh, kicking around there um, and so yeah I'm almost finished this one and then I will show you the other two as well now the other two I will do a little bit differently this one I'm trimming this way knowing um, you know that I'm going to add laces and embellishments and you know maybe a doily or two on top but I don't know at what point yet okay so that looks a little bit better it's got it's a tight which I like uh, because it will ease out uh, as we start working with it more but it's got a nice uh, finish to it I love this edge love 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 that that is such a fun part to me so you know it can be as simple as adding some some of uh, this fabric in here this is from the other uh, journal you know and then building on it with some lace and trim and the next thing you know it's going to be just a gorgeous gorgeous piece great pockets on the inside possibility there with this loose thing that's there and some more shabbiness on the back side so this this cover is ready to go um I, I, I don't know if I mentioned or not, but these are all going to be Midori style notebooks. So they're going to have the elastic on the inside where the papers can come in and out. Now, I'm, I want to test a new method, um, uh, which is why I, I, I set a light fold on this because uh, I want to be able to build inside here um, so, so that if I want to add extra stuff, I can. Uh, but I have a an idea in my head for the uh, elastic to end up with three strands using one piece. So I'm going to see how that works. I will test it on something else first, and then uh, uh, if it works, then I will uh, show you in in the um, next video. Um, but if not, I will just do the regular Midori style with the two holes here, and then just feed the elastic through. Um, so, so that's coming up in, in, in the next part, but for today, we're just going to get these all, uh, covered, basically ready to go. I will share the embellishing and all that stuff with you along the way. So here's the next one. Um, no problems here whatsoever. So I was really happy about that. Um, nice and tight. And the stitching is again very close to the edge. No felt is going to show through here. But in this case, I want to leave a frayed edge all the way around. So I'm going to trim it um, about a quarter of an inch uh, to the end of my stitching. And I don't worry if it's perfect. I just don't want to fray all that part by hand. And once, once it's uh, fringed, uh, the fringes are going to go willy-nilly all over the place anyway, so you won't know whether it's straight or not straight. 
And this still has some possibilities, so I will keep it. And yes, I could have gone a little bit closer, but I always like to, um, you know, just give myself that extra room just in case. And so the same thing, I'm going to trim it about a quarter of an inch. It's more like three eighths of an inch, I think. Away from the edge. And I could tear it, but I worry that it may not be straight. The, you know, I may have stretched some of the threads as I was sewing. So if it's not straight and you tear it, you might tear into your, your stitches. I hope this isn't too boring for you to watch. And if it is, just fast forward to the end, keeping that. Sometimes the tiniest little piece that you take off of something becomes a cluster or the base of something else. So I never uh, give it up until the very end. And then usually things like this become go into a cluster where I just do a bunch of fabric cluster bases. Okay, so I've cut all the way around here. Uh, maybe a little bit longer on this one than the other one, but it really doesn't matter. And, and this is a very... Um, uh, loose fabric so to pull the threads out isn't going to take much I'm not going to do all of this on camera but I'll just show you how I'm going to pull them out and once you get going then you can see the threads you're pulling you know some some uh, pull out very easily some you have to work it a little bit harder I will use a pokey tool sometimes to get them to fray a little bit more but in this case, it's it's coming along really nicely. Now, you know what? These are pretty long. I'm going to keep them. I know. I keep everything, don't I? So and once you've done a little bit on one side, you can see the threads that you want to pull going in the opposite direction. Weft and warp, right? For those of you that are weavers, that's how you say it. Weft and warp. Now I'm just pulling... Sometimes they get stuck. And let's see how we get on this end here. So this is an indication to me that the um, fabric was pulled a little bit because there's a little bit longer of a material still here and the fraying is a little bit shorter on that side. So, um, But that's okay. We'll go up to as far as we can or as close as we can without going past my stitching. One more, I think. Two more. Okay, so you can see that it's frayed a lot more here. But if you look over here, there's a little bit of a line here. So I don't want to go past, I don't want to pull any more threads out this way because then it's going to be getting into the sewing where I've stitched it. So that's as far as it's going to be. So this is a little bit shorter anyway. I see it must have gone a little crooked. So I can shave that down with my scissors a little bit so that it matches a little bit better. But I can now see the threads here to pull this direction. And yeah, some ways, um, well, you know, one way is usually easier than the other. And in this case, that's, oh, see, I'm running into the, where I'm getting into too close to my stitching. So now I'm done over here, but I still have a little bit on this side. So, so I'll just trim this down so it matches a little bit better. One more time around. I think, oh, no, I guess two times around, yeah. Two more sides. And I may decide to go a little bit closer with my my um, cutting, cutting it a little bit closer, but that I can decide after. Okay, going in this direction, the last one. And 
and here we're getting very close to the stitches so I don't have much that I can take out of this one. So I will just leave the rest. Okay, so this one is frayed nicely all the way around. I hope you can see. And I want it to look shabby like that. And then when I fold it closed, I still have lots of threads here to pull out. Um, but lots of possibilities for decorating. Now on this one, you can see a little bit of the stitching along here. I will probably, um, you know, glue some lace or ruffle. It depends on the papers that I put in here afterwards and how far they're going to stick out um, and how much trimming I have to do back and forth. But that is something I will show you in the next video uh, as we start doing other steps to this. Um, so the third one, again, um, nice loose fabrics. I have to trim this down first and then fray the edges. Um, I will still keep all of these threads because I don't know at this point what I want to use them for, but they, they just go in the pile of the stuff that's left over for this. This had um, a hem on the bottom. I will cut that hem off and then continue my fraying, but it looks like I went a little um, off here. So if you can see it's shorter at this end and longer at this end, I'm, you know, I may just do a little bit of a fringe on the bottom or not at all. Um, in this case, I might use this opportunity to uh, put some uh, embellishments or trims along the bottom here to cover that up. So on this one, it's more noticeable. Uh, you can see where the felt ends and the stitching starts. Um, either way, it's good because I know that the felt is inside there. Um, and that I will use as an opportunity to add some type of trims and, and bring it right up to that felt line so that it isn't noticeable on the outside that the felt has ended and the, where the stitching starts. It's about a, in this case, it's about a quarter of an inch there. It's very close here and about a quarter of an inch on top. So I was a little bit shy when I cut this felt uh, this time around, but that's okay. It gives me a nice base here. And I don't know if you can see that indent in the fabric or not, but it gives me a nice base here to add lots of decorations and not create any more bulk. The other thing that I like about this cover is that I have these lines um, that just screams to me that I can use that as a way to uh, embellish this book and, and then create little pockets of uh, opportunity where I might add, uh, you know, some lace or doilies or something and, and it's kind of sectioned off. So when you see the back side of it, it's the same thing. I've got the, like, this will be a lot shorter. Uh, and I've got the polka dots and a little bit of the striping there and, and these two patterns here. Uh, I focused on this pattern as pretty as it is. I focused on it being on the back, knowing that I probably won't decorate the back, you know, as dimensional as I will on here. So then I get kind of the best of the best because I get this beautiful butterfly in the image or, or in the book cover. But then I have the opportunity to decorate on here. So there's always some... You know, little things that you got to think about when you're putting a book together with this kind of a pattern as to what you want to show. Um, and, you know, because many times I've put this beautiful design on the front and then by the time I'm finished embellishing it, I've covered it all up. So so keep that in mind when you're doing your books that you don't necessarily want the prettiest thing on the front here. You may want it on the back so that you can decorate the front. So I'm not going to bother to go any further with this one. I will do it off camera. That's it for this video. We've put the book covers together. You may want to do some yourself and, and play along. When the next part will get done, I'm not sure. Um, it is early in the day, so I might still play a little bit longer and get all my books uh, ready to go or get the papers uh, sort of in a, in a way that um, are more organized so that I can show you how I put the papers together. Uh, but one way or another, you'll get to see the next step soon. I don't know when, but you will see the next step soon. That's it. That's all. I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week. I'm not even going to bother saying what day it was because it started from one day and ended, you know, a couple weeks later, but the video is done now and you'll be able to watch it and, and uh, the next part will come along soon. Have a creative day and a creative week. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye for now.